Africa. 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 The Swahili region, mainly the East African area, was a very influential and culturally strong region. The Swahili culture has lasted the test of time and to a very high level maintained its relevance. A lot of speculations tend to tie the Swahili culture to Arab influence. But some historians disagree. This they claimed that the Swahili, the language and some of the other cultural valuations were traceable to the Bantu language lineage of Africa. There may have been some Arab integrations because of the high level of a relationship between the Swahili region and the Arab influence or Arab area, mainly in the area of uh, economic activities. This is not to say that the Swahili culture or Swahili region can be strongly or is strongly associated to Arab influence. Well, at the time in the history of the Swahili area, Islam was introduced. The introduction of Islam and the assimilation of Islam by some of the people in the, in the region brought in some changes also towards the Swahili culture. The 1495 to 14, the 1497 to 1498 exploration led by Vasco da Gama led to the analysis and exploration of the Swahili region. This exploration was aided and supported by the Portuguese. Having visited the region, Vasco da Gama returned to Portugal and explained or narrated and at the same time described the great wealth of the Swahili cities. This made the kings of the Portuguese or the, the king of Portugal, the kings of Portugal, to take interest in the Swahili region. Subsequently, the kings of Portugal sent fleets to capture most of the cities in the Swahili region. Some of these cities were Malindi, Mombasa, Mogadishu, Pate, Lamu, Kilifi, Pemba, Mozambique, Zanzibar, Mafia, Kewa, Sofala, etc. Most of these Swahili cities existed along the coast in the East African region and they served and they served as great trading towns and we are very instrumental in the international trade in that region mainly the international trade between the Swahili people and some parts of Asia there we are substantial towns with laid out streets and at the same time well built houses with stones and large windows which existed in this in most of these cities some of these houses had terraces and gardens the reality on the ground was that there were serious developments that were on the ground in most of the cities within the uh, Swahili area. When the Portuguese arrived towards the end of the 15th century, 
they were astonished at the spectacular or the spectacle of flourishing trade, prosperity, and the level of civilization of the area. The activities of the Portuguese greatly affected the area. The Portuguese captured a good number of these towns, and this capture and the activities of the Portuguese ruined most of these towns. Some of these towns were abandoned by the people. They seriously affected trading activities. Some of the cities as well survived. One great thing was that the Swahili culture survived. Because of how strong and how uh, valued and how valued it was among the people. At the end of the 17th century, the Portuguese were expelled from the region. They were expelled from most of the ports or most of the cities by a combination of the Africans and they would the help of the Omani rule or the Oman in southwestern or southeastern Arabia. While the exit of the Portuguese opened the face of the Omani influence in the region. Oman, the kingdom of Oman, came with the aid of the locals they were able to chase out the Portuguese. And then the, 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 the whole, the exit of the Portuguese opened chapter or opened the way for the, um, uh, for Omani influence in the region. Please, if you're watching us for the very first time, subscribe to our channel and click on the notification icon so that anytime we drop a new content, you will be one of the earliest persons to be notified. Thanks for being part of this channel.